when a fresh course has been created for you, what you'll see first when you've changed the home page layout to, say, a page that I'll design myself, then you'll be presented with this a small message here, and then you can start editing it right now. And you'll also see that the Edit This Page button here is always going to be on the right of the page that you're working on. One other place where you can find your pages is on the left course navigation. But for now, we'll just work on the course homepage. So I click on Start Editing It Now. Once you've entered the page editing mode, you should see your course title and your left course navigation here still on the left. And you should now have a formatting bar, which is called the Rich Content Editor by Canvas. And the reason why it's not just for formatting, uh, but also to insert rich content. And this rich content will come from the educational apps that you can enable under the course settings. So, for example, if you want to insert uh, Google Charts or YouTube videos, you could actually do that by adding the Google Chart app or the Google YouTube app. And there's many more apps under Settings. But a basic course should just show a few icons here and um, a more once you've added more apps, then you'll see more icons here on the right. Then on the right sidebar, you should see your page tools, which is where you can insert links, uh, files, and images, or assignments, quizzes, announcements, discussions, modules, and other uh, types of navigation elements into your page. So briefly, I'll go and insert a piece of text so that I can show you how the uh, formatting works. So I had a document open somewhere else and let's say I had a bunch of text. I highlighted it. I did a control C for copying and then I insert my cursor here inside of this text editing window and I click on control V to paste it. And now I have a bunch of text here which I can now edit so as you can see, this is a rather large uh, font. This is actually Heading 2 because I highlighted it and it's showing Heading 2. So what I want to do now is change that back to Paragraph. I could then change the font size. Say I want to make it a little bit bigger. And now let's say I want to add some bold here, maybe some italics, some underline. I can change the text color by highlighting a piece of text. You can double click to select a, uh, a complete word and again uh, click on the text color and notice when you roll over any of these icons they'll give you a little tooltip or a little context sensitive help so you know what uh, this icon does. Uh, so I could also highlight it first and then give it a highlight color, give this some yellow color. Now if this is getting all too busy I can remove some of the formatting using the eraser tool. So you first have to highlight the piece of text you want to erase the formatting for and then click on the icon and now you can see the uh, formatting has been erased. Now if you want to uh, align it a certain way, you can left align, center align, uh, right align. You can create some bullets. And you can add some uh, numbered uh, lists as well. The next item here on the list here is if you want to insert, let's say you want would like to have two columns of text uh, since you like the looks of that. What you can do then is insert, I want to put the table right here and the next icon is insert edit table. So I click on that. Now you can, the default is two columns and two rows which is a pretty good way to, to format a, a table. But you could have three rows if you want to do three columns or four rows. Then you can add cell padding, which is the padding between the table and the rest of the screen. You can do cell spacing, which is between the two cells of the table, the cells within the table. You can uh, set the alignment to center, left, or right, and that's the alignment for the whole table. And if you leave it as default uh, zero for the border, then uh, anybody who's reading your page won't see the table borders, which is kind of the uh, the best way to do it. Uh, but if you do want borders, you can add a one or a two for one pixel wide uh, border. The width and height are just a way to force the table to be a certain size. 
and then class gets into the more HTML type of uh, styling and tagging. So that's a little more technical. Uh, and then under advanced, you also can do some more technical type of functions to this table. Uh, and you also can change the background color of the border or the background color of the table itself. And then when you're ready to go, click on insert. And you now have a basic table that you can copy and paste text into. So I'll go ahead and copy this text here, do a control C, control V. And then I do another control V so that I have two pieces of text side by side. And then when you click on save changes, you'll see that it looks pretty clean. So you now have two pieces of text here. So I'll go back to edit this page. Uh, let's say you want, would like to create a nice uh, header here at the top. I'll go ahead and copy some text and click on Control V to paste it. And I made it center aligned. And let me clean up some of this extra information here. Clean this up a little bit. And so now I go ahead and add a course image. A lot of uh, faculty and instructors like to have a course image. So what you can do now is click on the embed image icon here on the right. And from this window, you can see the URL, which is the link of the image. If you have a direct link to your image, you can paste that in here. And then uh, make sure you have an alt text. And this is primarily for people with vision impairment so that they can at least have a way of knowing what the image is by having an accurate description about the image. The aspect ratio will be the same as the image by default. Now, if you want to change the size of the image, you simply add new numbers in the under dimensions. And the second tab here at the top is if you have any files within Canvas, like images that you would like to insert, then you could look for those files from within here. And then you would just select the image from there. And then finally, the Flickr tab. And this is a uh, social sharing network site that allows people to share their images. And what it does, uh, what Canvas does, is just look for the Creative Commons license, uh, licensed images. So that way, you won't trample on anybody's copyright. So if I typed in a certain topic, I would get a whole bunch of results here. And then I would just pick on the uh, image that I'd like and then click on update and there you go there's an image uh, in your course page in your course home page you can then apply the center alignment to make the image centered if the image is too large you can grab the corner handles of the image and that way you can click and drag with your mouse to make the image smaller or bigger if you grab one of these handles on the side it's going to skewer the image so you may not like that and then you have a nice looking course homepage. Now, if you want to start adding your announcements and your discussions, your quizzes and assignments into your course homepage as well, then let's go scroll down a little bit. And if I wanted to add some assignments here at the bottom, then use the sidebar menu to click on the assignments list and it automatically link to the assignment list in there. And I could also add a quiz list in here. I can click and drag and put that list anywhere I want. So that's just a matter of dragging these lists over. And then once you've pasted these links in there, you can always reformat them, remove the uh, bullets, or make them left aligned or right aligned. So this is an, a great, easy way to insert course content that's already there. Uh, simply by clicking and dragging it into your page. And from within the sidebar, you can also access your course files. If you want to upload uh, new files, you can do that for, right from within here. And then finally, you can add images that you already have uploaded within your course files. So there are several ways you can insert images. Uh, one from the uh, rich content editor and one from within the images under sidebar. Then when you have finished changes, click on Save Changes. And you should see a confirmation, this green horizontal bar, whenever you've made a successful update. 
which you can close out of by clicking the X in the top right corner. And one more thing too, if you do want to notify your students that you've made changes to a certain page, simply select this little checkbox here at the bottom of the editing page before you click on Save Changes. So what does it all look like from the student perspective? Well, I'll switch over to a student screen. And as you can see, this is what the student would see who logs into the page you've just created. They'll see uh, no, none of the editing tools or any of the control and settings buttons. And the left course navigation will be uh, nice and clean. They won't see the grayed out buttons that you saw on your perspective. And they can see that you last edited it also a couple hours ago if you edited recently. And they can still see the course stream by clicking on See Course Stream. Now one last thing before I forget, if you are into HTML markup language, then you can switch views at the top of your editing page. And then you can see all the HTML that sits behind all the formatting. But you have to be in the coding in order to uh, make changes to that. So just to wrap up here, you can add basically anything to your course homepage. You can add your syllabus, a link to your syllabus, a link to any of your assignments, any of your pages, any of the uh, quizzes, announcements. You can do that all on your course homepage while still keeping uh, links here at the left. Or you can remove any of these links on the left. And we'll get to that in a follow-up lecture.